Hey, what is up mortals? It is Grog Funky here with a new video for you. Welcome to part two of what if Deku was a dragon slayer. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So we begin. After a brief conversation with Wendy, Izuku went home to finish plotting out his training regimen for the next 10 months. The Granette figured in his recovery times and studying for the written exam. And when he had it written out, Izuku realized that he had himself on a pretty tight timetable. But he had come this far and was not about to give up. Izuku trained hard over the preceding months. Natsu and Lucy did check in on him every so often. Natsu checked to make sure he was keeping up his physical training. Lucy made sure he was studying enough. And before Izuku knew it, the day of the entrance exam had arrived. Izuku entered the UA campus. The green teen felt that he had entered a temple. After all... The boy practically worshipped heroes, and so many of the top heroes in Japanese society had received their training from this place. Azuku was so entranced by the setting that he tripped over his own feet. The boy would have hit the ground face first if someone had not caught him by the collar. Watch where you're going! It is bad luck to trip over yourself! Once Azuku collected himself, he got a good look at his savior. Wendy? Azuku! The two then said at that same time, while pointing a finger at each other, what are you doing here? The flustered boy took a moment to collect himself. I am here to take the UA entrance exam. What a coincidence. So am I. Move it, you two. There are people trying to get through here. Azuku gritted his teeth in frustration. He knew that voice also. Kachan, come to see me get the top score? You can forget that miserable Deku. I'll be getting the top score, you hear? Wendy committed under her breath. Everyone in the courtyard hears you. The bomb-handed youth and the fry-breathing boy glared at each other menacingly. After a long moment, Wendy and Izuku stepped aside to let Baka go through. Izuku turned back to Wendy. So, Wendy, you want to be a hero? That's the plan, and since UA is the best hero course there is, I figured I would take the exam and get in. I know what you mean. Good luck. You too. The two UA hopefuls entered the testing site to see what surprises were in store for them. After entering the auditorium, all of the students were welcomed by the voice hero, Present Mike. Welcome to our awesome entrance exam! Today, you all will be fighting various robots. The sheet in front of you shows the types and points values of each robot. There are three types that will give you points from 1 to 3 based on their level of difficulty. Midoriya was fanboying out of the sight of Present Mike. Suddenly, a blue-haired boy stood up. Sir, you said that there were three types of faux villains, but the sheet shows four types. This is not some kind of oversight that we can accept from the number one school in the country. The blue-haired boy then turned towards Midoriya. And you, with the unkempt hair, stop fanboying out and take this seriously. Your jabbering is disturbing the rest of us. Thank you, test taker. Your complaint has been registered. You see that the fourth robot type is worth zero points. They are used as an obstacle for you to avoid. You could fight them, but there's kind of no point. Thank you, sir. All right. With all the explanations finished, let's get out there. All of the students left the auditorium in an orderly manner. After getting changed, all of the test takers gathered at their assigned testing fields. Midoriya was busy psyching himself up when he noticed Wendy nearby. He watched the skinny girl take deep breaths and talking to herself. The plain-looking teen thought it would be a good idea to wish her luck on the test. Before he could take even a single step, a hand grabbed his shoulder. When Midoriya turned to see who the hand belonged to, he was shocked. It was the blue-haired boy from the auditorium who had chewed Midoriya out for being a fanboy. It looks like she's trying to focus on the task at hand. What were you looking to do? Distract her and cause her to fail the test? Before Midoriya could respond to the serious boy, President Mike yelled out over the crowd, Go, go, go! What are you kids waiting for? There are no start signals in a real battle. Suddenly, everyone was running. Midoriya knew that speed was going to play a huge part in this test. So, the boy knew he could not mess around. The blazing teen took off running into the battlefield. As the blazing youth zipped through the streets of the fake city, the first robot he came across was a one-pointer. Midoriya knew he needed to act quickly. Midoriya was a ways off from the target so he knew he needed a long-distance attack. So the boy placed his hands in front of his mouth and took a deep breath. 
Magic circles appeared in front of his hands. The energetic boy yelled out, Fire dragons roar! The one-pointer was consumed in a massive fireball. The robot was then reduced to a smoking pile of melted metal and ash. And so it went. Midoriya rushed around the field, destroying robots when he found them. He also managed to save several other test takers who got into trouble. As the fiery teen blasted his way through the battlefield, he eventually came upon a familiar face. Midoriya came upon the scene of Wendy being attacked by a three-pointer. The pine-haired youth was about to rush in to help the blue-haired girl, until he was frozen in place by a shocking sight. Wendy stood before the robot and a magic circle appeared before the small girl. She then yelled out, Sky Dragons Roar! Suddenly, a powerful vortex of wind burst into being. The whirlwind sent the robot flying through the air. The automation crashed into the ground and collapsed like a soda can. Midoriya was surprised to see that the young girl he had met was in fact a dragon slayer. The boy just stood there in his lower jaw scraping the ground. Natsu had told Midoriya that there were other individuals with dragon slayer powers, but the Korean teen did not expect to think that he would meet one so soon. He also never thought that the dragon slayer would be so cute. Before the confused teen could collect himself, Wendy noticed him and ran over. Well, hello there, Midoriya. I guess the fact that I'm a dragon slayer is in the open. I can see that. So, you can control and use wind? Right. You are a fire dragon slayer, so you control fire? I am a sky dragon slayer, so I use wind. Okay. You don't by chance know my masters Natsu Dragneel and Lucy Hartphelia. As a matter of fact, I do. They found me before you. Lucy helped me get control of my powers. When I told Lucy that I planned to go out for UA, she asked me to look out for you. Why would she do that? Lucy told me that you're the kind of person who would risk life and limb to help someone. She also said that you are the kind that always finds yourself in trouble, just like Natsu. So, Lucy wanted me to look after you. At the young girl's words, Midoriya got a sheepish look on his face. Of course, I was trying not to agree to any of this until I met you. Lucy arranged for me to meet you incognito. You mean, that day we first met? Lucy set that up? <laughs> yes, she did. I told her I would not look out for anyone unless they were a nice person. So, was I nice? The girl blushed mildly and then responded, Well, I am here, aren't I? Huh, I guess you are. The confused but happy boy smiled at the blue-haired girl. Listen, how about we stick together for the rest of this test? No telling what the UA staff has in store for us. I like the way you think of Midoriya. The two dragon slayers ran off to find more robots. In the control room, surrounded by monitors, All Might, in his weak form, sat watching the test with Presenbold Nezu to his right, and Lucy Hartphelia to his left. Are these two young people you told us about, Miss Hartphelia? Yes, they are, Principal Nezu. Well, you certainly did not undersell their skills. I can't wait to see what they do next. I would be interested to know what kind of training you put them through to get these results, young lady. Well, I trained the girl. My husband trained the boy. All Might thought quietly to himself. Both of these young people had the strength to be his successor. He knew that the Midoriya had the character, but the number one hero would not make this decision lightly. Whoever he chooses would bear the weight of the world on their shoulders as the new symbol of peace. Even with that thought, All Might was glad to see that this new generation of heroes had such potential. Of course, the test is not over yet. They still have a big hurdle to overcome. True, All Might. But even so, it looks like this is shaping up to be a fine year at UA High School. Back on the battlefield, Midoriya and Wendy tore through the fake city. They used their fire and wind attacks to blast robots apart when they found them. The two even managed to save several other examinees who were in over their heads. As Midoriya and Wendy destroyed a pair of three-point robots, Wendy asked Midoriya a question. By my count, I have 50 points. How many do you have, Midoriya? I have 52. That should put us in good shape to pass the test. But let's see if we can get a few more just to be safe. Good idea. The two dragon slayers took off to find more points. As the two exited the back streets and entered the main street, the ground shook. Suddenly, the loud grinding of gears reverberated throughout the battle stage. Rising up from the ground was their humongous zero-pointer robot. Honey is a free browser add-on available on Google, Opera, Firefox, and Safari. If it's a browser, it has Honey. 
Honey automatically saves you money when you check out on sites like Amazon, Papa John's, Kohl's, wherever you shop. It's a good chance that Honey can save you money. All you have to do when you're checking out at these major sites is click that little orange button and it will scan the entire internet and find discount codes for you. If there is a coupon code, they will find it. And if there's not a coupon code, you can rest assured that you are getting the best price possible. And there literally is not one available on the internet. If you install Honey right now, you can save like $50 to $100 on your shopping, doing nothing. There's literally no reason not to install Honey. It takes two clicks. 10 million people use it, 100,000 five-star reviews. Unless you hate money, you should install Honey. That thing is huge! How can we beat something like that? President Mike said that it would be best to avoid zero pointers. I can see now why he said that. Let's run, Wendy. We have enough points to pass. I completely agree. As the two teens turned to retreat, a feminine voice full of panic could be heard. Ow! My ankle! Someone help! Midoriya turned back and saw a pretty brunette girl trapped under some rubble. The concerned teen figured the girl got trapped by the debris from a falling building when the zero pointer emerged. Wendy saw the look in Midoriya's eye and knew what they had to do. Midoriya, you take care of the robot. I'll help the girl. Really, Wendy? But you were set on running away a minute ago. That was then. This is now. Besides, you're going to help the girl whether I go or not, right? Yes, I cannot run away when others need my help. That's what I thought. Your fire pack's more of a punch than my wind. You stand a better chance of damaging that behemoth. I can get the girl clear. Judging from the way her leg is bent, it is probably broken. I can do more for her if that is true. Really? How is that? No time to explain right now. Get going! Midoriya did not think twice. The determined youth charged the Zero Pointer, while Wendy went to free the brunette. Midoriya had no idea what he was going to do. He knew that his standard melee attacks would not work. He also doubted that his Fire Dragon's roar would do anything against a foe that big. Midoriya thought hard and only came up with one option. Midoriya had not mastered this move yet, and it drained a lot of his magic, but he had no choice. The blazing boy then jumped onto the Zero Pointer's body. Midoriya then climbed up the giant's shoulders. Midoriya then focused his magic power into his hands. Suddenly, a ball of super condensed fire appeared between the boy's hands. Midoriya then raised the ball over his head and chanted all of the magic he had left into it. The ball expanded to a massive size. Midoriya then yelled out, Fire Dragon! Brilliant Flame! The blazing youth then brought the giant fireball down on the giant's robot's head. The fire was so hot that it melted the robot all of the way down to its chest. With this, the robot stopped moving. Midoriya, being completely drained of power, fell unconscious and started falling towards the ground. Having no robot to stand on, the knockout teen would have hit the ground with a massive impact, if not for the intervention of Wendy and the girl the two dragon slayers saved. It turned out that the girl, whose name was Ochako Uraraka, did have a broken ankle. Wendy got her free and gave her some light healing with her cure magic. She told Ochako that it was only sprained, not wanting to reveal that she had a second magic type. Just as Uraraka was thanking Wendy for her help, the zero pointer exploded in a shower of fire and metal but the girls were more worried about the fact that Midoriya was falling at incredible speed. I could use my quirk on him and if it got more height. I can help with that. How? Hold on. Wendy then used her wind magic to surround Uraraka in a whirlwind. This wind funnel lifted the pink-cheeked girl off the ground towards Midoriya. When she met up with Midoriya, the brunette slapped the green-haired boy across the face. This immediately rendered the teen weightless. Uraraka then grabbed the boy as Wendy lowered the two to the ground level. Uraraka then released her power and upchucked rainbows from the strain of overusing her quirk. Present Mike then yelled out, And that's the end! All of you cool cats that can please exit the testing field! For those that can't, no worries! We will be providing awesome medical services! Suddenly, an elderly woman in the doctor's office outfitted appeared on the battlefield, Great job, kiddos. Even if you did not pass today, you are all winners in my book. If anyone is in need of medical treatment, over here, ma'am. What is going on, ladies? Excuse me, ma'am, but are you a doctor or something? No need for excuses, child. I am the youthful heroine recovery girl. Now, let's see those injuries. Wendy and Uraraka asked recovery girl to check on Midoriya before them. After all, the boy was unconscious and looked very beat up. 
Recovery Girl looked the boy over. The elderly hero was shocked to find that he was perfectly fine. He was unconscious, but all of his wounds were very superficial. The kindly woman looked at the two girls. Both young ladies were hovering over Midoriya with worried expressions. No need to worry, my dears. Your friend will be fine. But that big fireball, and he looks so beat up. Are you sure, miss? I am sure. Most of his wounds are minor scrapes and bruises. As for him being unconscious, he is just exhausted. I will move him to my clinic for observation, but he will have to heal slowly. I cannot use my power on him in this condition. Why is that? My power just accelerates the healing process. If I used it on him right now, he might die instead of heal. If it's all right, miss, can I go with him? Recovery Girl saw the concerned look on Wendy's face. Of course, child. That is no problem. Me too. He did so much to save me. I just want to be sure he's all right. Uraraka, you need to get checked out first. Plus, Recovery Girl probably won't like too many people in her clinic. I can speak for myself, and no, I would not want that. Recovery Girl then gave a sweet look to Uraraka. Let me look after you, child. That ankle is not very serious, but it does need looking after. The healing hero then called in for some robots to take Midoriya to the clinic to rest. When the two dragon slayers arrived at the clinic, they were met by Lucy Hartfilia. Lucy, what are you doing here? I was in the observation room watching the exam. You two did really well. Thank you, master. If I do not miss my guess, you came here to heal Midoriya. Yes, I figured my cure magic would be more than Recovery Girl's power. Or at least, I figured it couldn't hurt to try. After all, I'm still learning how to use that power. Well, you better get to work then. Right. Wendy bowed to Lucy and then started to work on Midoriya. As her bluish-green magic followed over the green-haired boy, his bruises healed. It turned out that Recovery Girl was right. Wendy was amazed that Midoriya had very few injuries after a big attack like that. I guess that can be put down to Natsu's hard training. The biggest problem that Midoriya had was that he had completely depleted his magical power, but that would recover with time. In fact, Wendy could feel the plain-looking boy's power already recovering. I guess you are right about Midoriya here, Master. He does have a bad habit of overdoing it. More than likely he gets that from Natsu. I love the guy, but he can become a one-man wrecking crew when someone is in trouble. That is why I wanted to pair you two up. Really, Master? Yes. Individuals like Midoriya need someone to watch their back. The fact that you are a dragon slayer with healing powers was a godsend. Does that mean we pass the test? That I do not know, Wendy. I was allowed to observe, but I had no influence over the results at all. You will just have to wait and see like everyone else. It was at this point that Midoriya woke up. I feel like a train hit me. No train, my friend but you certainly did a number on that zero-pointer. Are we really friends? Wendy was taken aback by the question. Do you think I would be that worried about someone who isn't? Wendy then grabbed a pillow and smacked Midoriya across the face with it. Try and give me some warning when you're going to do something crazy like that. Okay, deal, friend. Midoriya extended his fist to the girl. She laughed at the gesture, but returned it with a soft bump. Okay, you two have been through a lot today. Go home and rest. No training for the next few days, okay? Wendy turned to leave, but came back into the room. Quick, Midoriya, give me your phone. The confused boy reached into his pocket and produced the device. Wendy took it and quickly punched several buttons. That is my number. Call me when you feel better. The charming girl then blushed, thinking that this statement was too forward. I mean, for training. Yes, training, and only training. It's not like I find you cute or anything. I mean, you are so strong. I figured it would help us both, you know? Before the innocent girl could get more flustered, Midoriya responded, That is a good idea! Plus, I have a feeling that you have a few things you could teach me as well. He then gave the girl a confident smile. Okay, I look forward to it. Wendy then turned and left the room. After resting a little while longer, Midoriya collected his things and went home. Meanwhile, a meeting was taking place in another part of UA. Principal Nezu and All Might were deep in conversation. What do you think of the test, old friend? Did anyone catch your attention? There were a few, but I still have not made my decision. One for all is a huge responsibility. Choosing the next holder cannot be taken lightly. I will continue to observe this progress and see who is deserving. A fair decision. Just keep in mind that this is a decision that you can no longer put off. You have been a great champion of the people, All Might. 
but your injury can no longer be ignored. I know that, Principal, and I thank you for this new job, and giving me the opportunity to find a worthy successor. I know they roam the halls of UA. Of course. You are not the only one concerned about society. The two educators were interrupted by a knock at the door. Are you expecting someone, Principal? Why, yes, I am. In addition to hiring you, I have also taken the liberty of hiring another instructor. Is that really necessary, sir? Necessary or not, the paperwork is complete, and she will be starting at the same time you are. Isn't that exciting? The mouse man then turned to the door. You can come in. The door opened to reveal a tall woman with crimson hair wearing armor and a blue skirt. It is not nice to keep people waiting. After all, you asked me here. All Might quietly freaked out at the sight of the stern-looking woman. You are right. I am sorry. The principal turned back to All Might. All Might, have you met the requipped hero Titania? It is only proper that you introduce me by my hero name. But since we are going to be working together, you both may call me by my real name. Urza Scarlet. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description. So feel free to check out all other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day!